Oh, perfect timing. My dear Mordred, I present Richard Baker, party leader of the Black Bands. Oh. Detective Foley. We meet at last. I don't know what voice to give him either. <laughs> Pleasure's mine, Mr. Baker. Sorry to bother you, but I urgently need to ask you some questions. You are a man who gets loves to get straight to the point. I just went through four hours of interrogation, but I suppose some more questioning won't kill me. I don't know, that's like a hybrid British accent. <laughs> After all, it is well known. There's no rest for the wicked. Then I'll leave you lovebirds alone. If you need anything, just call me. Shall we start, detective? Hey, it works. I'm curious to know what you want from me. Okay, uh... Let's just speak to him. Um... Uh... Let's go with the victim. Could you describe your relationship with Alicia? Alicia? She was a young and naive girl. Maybe too naive. Alicia Hart. Let's see. Alicia, Alicia was 25. Alicia is an impulsive and emotional girl. Despite her sweet and motherly character, her disappointment towards the country's politics had made her reticent, reticent I think? and distrustful towards people she doesn't know. Daughter of a painter and a humble pharmacist, she could never fulfill her childhood dream to study filmmaking, so she decided to quit school right after graduating. She's now doing temporary jobs, while dreaming of entering the movie business. Okay. She had the heart of an artist and wanted to be director. But she could not afford any of Nova Polema's schools. I don't know. I'm just going back and forth with this accent. She was always wandering, filming places and people with a 50-year-old camera and hoping to make a name for herself to become someone. Why would a girl so disposed decided to bond with a black band's leader? The flesh is weak and ambition does not come from pureness. She was pretty and I couldn't give her what she wanted. You can figure out the rest. Let's go with the case reconstruction. Mr. Baker, I need to hear your version of the facts. Try to describe the events of that night and be as specific as possible. Unless you had constructed contacted me a few days earlier. She was threatening to reveal our affair to the press if I had not promised to support her for life. She suggested meeting in Treasury Park to discuss the terms of the agreement and I accepted without question. I arrived on time and I attempted to end the matter once and for all. Unfortunately, by the time I arrived she had already been tied to that tree and killed. I yelled at her in the hope that she was still alive. And I was in such a panic that I tried to pull out the damn arrow. Shortly after, someone attacked me from behind and managed to wound my hand with a knife while I was trying to defend myself. I'm just getting down and dirty with this accent. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying. I tried to run, but after a few steps, I was thrown against the bench. After the impact, I fainted. I was sure I was going to die. But I was losing consciousness, I heard someone screaming, maybe a girl. And then everything went black. Girl scream? I woke up ten minutes later, and I was alone with the body. The attacker had disappeared. What the? Take advantage of the moment I managed to get away and call help. Call for help. You already know the rest. Alright. Talk about the black band. You considered one of the moderate members of the party. Why? Because, unlike most of my colleagues, I don't discriminate against people according to race, sex, or religion. But simply by worthiness. And such worthiness is defined by the Patterson test that we invented more than 20 years ago. Uh, let's talk about the Patterson test. 
Every five years, the citizens of Nova Palemos must take the Patterson test. It consists of multiple questions aimed at assessing the IQ and the individual skills of each person. Obtaining a high score gives several advantages, such as better job positions, the opportunity to openly share personal thoughts on internet and free access to medical facilities. Inside the city, there are many institutes that offer courses to help prepare people for the test. They are usually attended by older people who often find it more difficult to pass the test. Oh, so this is like a very heavily, uh, a society based very heavily on, um, I guess, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, your worthiness of society? So like a caste system, I guess? Oh, the Patterson test. Is that the examination which, in addition to individual abilities, a test earnings, origin, and political beliefs? Listen to me, Mr. Foley. It's pale madness if you think we can share the resources of Nova Palemos with everyone. Uncontrolled immigration, pure, poor education, and the opinion of illiterate people are the reason behind the threat of collapse. Nova Palemos is built on ambition, and I won't allow some deadbeat parasites to destroy our promised land. I'm starting to think that you're exploiting education to indoctrinate people, just in order to indoctrinate an army of puppets. You may disagree with our views, Detective, but let me remind you that your future is bound to mine. If I fall, you're going down with me. I suggest you put a muzzle on that rabid dog inside you. Hmm. Something wrong, Detective. I noticed very interesting detail while you were talking. What do you mean? <clears throat> You mentioned the case, your Gen party Pot and the victim. Said okay, I'm back, Still. but he'll be lurking, need to get ready to leave. Alright, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Joy Surd. Said off. <laughs> in your statements, you never involved one of the most important actors in this huge farce. And I believe that's no coincidence. I don't Gen understand. Pot said sad face i don't want to go i'm really liking this game oh well i might i'm gonna buy this i think and i'll play it either the next chance i get or next week the person that you've been Joy avoiding Sir. talking about is said oh it's a demo yeah it's a demo for now but it's a long demo like gen pot said sweet i hope to be there yeah uh what's this Wait. Hold on. I need to see what they were saying. Um. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I forgot what they said. <laughs> I tried to make me lose my patience. No, this isn't the person you forgot to mention. Stay focused, Lord Dread. The person you've been avoiding talking about is. Oh, okay. Um, it's gotta be Abigail? No. Who's this? Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. It's not that lady. I think it's this one. Julie. I guess not. Cause he didn't mention Julie. I guess she's not important. Important. Abigail. The very same person that's testifying against you. I thought he mentioned her. I guess not. Abigail. What does she have to do with with this? You should tell me that. What are you implying? Abigail is testifying against me. Why the hell should I defend her? Uh oh. It's my life that's at risk, not hers. Just as I thought. Baker's lying and the mask proves it. If 
before I interrogate him further, I'll need more evidence on Abigail and Alicia in order to find the truth. I might find that evidence by talking to his wife. I should also go back and update Hera. Keep my insinuations, Mr. Baker. I've gone too far. Huh? What's for the sudden modesty, Mr. Foley? Well, don't worry. If you'll need me, you'll find me right here. Try not to take too long to find the truth. Or whatever else could exonerate me. Okay. I have to go to Baker's house, I believe. <laughs>